Welcome to another episode of Women in Focus. Our woman in focus today is an amazing woman. She is here from England on a special tour and uh, a speech that she is going to be giving uh, this evening. But when you see this interview, she would have been gone back to, uh, to England. She is a human rights activist, international human rights activist. Her name is Mandy Sangera, and she's our woman in focus today. How are you doing? Very nice to meet you. Nice Thank to you. meet you too. Um, so, human rights activist. Well, I know it's a really big title, <laughs> isn't it? And where do you begin? Yes. Right, well, 27 years ago, when I was a young person myself, um, in, when I was 19, 20, yeah. um, kind of saw a lot of things in the South Asian community, in my community that were happening, which were cultural practices, and I thought, you know what, these things are not right. We live in England, I live in the West, we need to talk about these practices. And I kind of fell into this by chance. It wasn't a plan, but it kind of has been an amazing journey, Shashma. I've so, been really lucky. So Mandy, let's, let's go back and talk about when you say human rights activists. I've, I've read a little bit about you and, you. and I've, I, in the Wikipedia, it said that, you know, you work with women who are forced into marriages. Yeah. Is that a main focus of yours? or Yeah, it is. I mean, today we are doing an event in Langley and in BC, and we're talking about early child forced marriage. And as I've been going around BC for the last couple of days, people are like, oh my God, is this happening? And when I'm meeting people, people are saying, yes, Mandy, this is happening, but we didn't know and we don't want to interfere. We don't want to get involved. Mm. So I talk about the umbrella term, which is called honor-based violence. So that can apply to FGM, forced marriages, honor killings, because we had one of Jesse Sidhu, as you know, in BC some years ago. And also I talk about other harmful practices where South Asian communities and the African community um, talk about cultural practices like witchcraft and juju think that young person is possessed. So I'm doing a lot of educating, a lot of campaigning, trying to educate the communities. So today I'm here and we've had support from the Prime Minister's wife herself today, Sophie Trudeau, has sent in a video because she realises this is an issue and we need to end early child forced marriages. And I want to be very clear because arranged marriages are a long-standing tradition in our South Asian community and in the African community. It's when a young person is put under duress, put under pressure and marry somebody against their will. Mm. Family putting their child under pressure and saying, I will disown you. You will not have inheritance if you don't do what we want. Mm -hmm. I, I know of uh, marriages where parents have decided and I think arranged marriages had There's its nothing own, wrong with that, yeah. you know, its own values. Yeah. Parents look at a family that is yeah. like their own family. Incompatible, yeah. And they say, my child is going to be happy in this particular yeah. environment. So yeah. so that arranged marriages has been going on for and a long time. And that's been going on. I mean, I have family, my own family and relatives have had arranged marriages and they're all happy and they've all got children. Right. There's nothing wrong with arranged marriages. It's when we are putting our child under emotional pressure. So say, for instance, if um, somebody is dating somebody from a different caste, right. somebody from a different religion, right. sometimes say if a girl is dating somebody and we don't like her boyfriend or the boyfriend... The is, family doesn't yeah, like... Yeah, the, and they don't uh, want to, or mm. they've actually already agreed that you will marry somebody in India, they've mm. given their word, so they will put you under a lot of duress. And Shushma, it comes back to the whole concept of honour and is it in our mm. community. And we need to sort of talk to our communities and say, OK, that's fine holding on to those things, but actually our children always have rights as well as individuals. And one of the big things in Canada is your immigration is like a magnet for the subcontinent. You marry a Canadian national, you can sponsor your whole family over. So you can see the motivations from South Asian families to actually marry their child to somebody in the subcontinent. Isn't because that then, interesting? Yeah. Uh, when you look at when you look at the young woman's life, yeah. uh, I have seen many young women, and I thought this practice did not take place, but yeah. I know that and that it does. Yeah. And and you coming from UK, In, yeah. um, you're telling me that it is happening over there. Yeah. I feel that when parents, and I hope you agree with me, yeah. that when parents come to to uh, emigrate to a country and then they have the children there, yeah. right, and then they force 
them to live the way they lived 30 years ago, yeah. I think that's unfair to the child. It is, and do you know what it is? Because actually, I know that, you know, when I was growing up, our community has an impact on us. They, you know, they teach you certain values, yes. and there is nothing wrong with that. Because no. actually, whether you're a Sikh, Hindu, Muslim, or whatever religion that you belong to, it's fine having those values. It's when the religion has nothing to do with it. It's the cultural part, mm. and we start abusing our children. And that is what it is. It's a violation of somebody's human right. So when I meet young people, because in Britain, um, I'm the founder of the Forced Marriage Unit. It's been founded over 13 years ago. Mm -hmm. And last year, we had over 1,200 cases reported to the Forced Marriage Unit. The really? most came from the Pakistani community. The second highest was from the Indian community, wow. from people from India. So, you know, it is really shocking because Britain, like you said, Shushma, mm. you went into Britain and a lot of people from India came over in the 60s. My parents came over in the late 60s. I mean, I was born in the, I was born in 70. So, you know, it's really shocking. And when I meet people my age who mm. are in their late 40s, who are now arranging and forcing their children into marriage, I right. don't get my head around that. No. If you've been born and educated in Britain, you have British values. Mm. Why are you carrying out out-of-date practices? I mean, mm. it is really shocking. That goes with uh, religion. Yeah. That also goes with culture. Yes, it does. That also goes with traditions. Of course it does. And and I think traditions people carry, that's the only thing they've got. Yeah. Right? Which is their own. Yeah. Nobody else has got any influence on, on that. Yeah. So those traditions probably are the ones that make younger people question. Yeah. And it does. And it comes back to being socially conditioned by society by Bollywood, by our community elders. So all these things have influences on us. So to me, um, I don't have children, um, Shushma, sadly, I wasn't able to have children and because of my health. But however, um, you know, I have amazing nieces and nephews. One of my sister-in-laws is Caucasian and we, you know, the children have been brought up on both um, kind of cultures. They take the best of the South Asian community and they take the best of the British white mm -hmm. British community. And the children have been brought up. They may go to a Godra, they may go to a Mandar, they may go to a church. So we don't force our children. Mm. We let them live their life and be happy. And that's what we feed our nieces and nephews every single day. I want to take you back to your childhood and, and uh, maybe explore yeah. a little bit of that. But let's take a short commercial break and we'll be right back. Get the program paid for. Um, Mandy Sangera is our woman in focus today. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Woman in Focus. Our woman in focus today is Mandy Sangera, and she is an international um, human rights activist. Yeah. Let me take you back to your childhood. You said your parents moved from India. Yeah to England, yep. that was the time a lot of parents were moving All came in, right? over because a lot yeah. of people came over for jobs in Britain. That's right. In the late 60s, I was born um, in 1970 to Sikh parents and my parents, um, you know, I was a firstborn. Yes. First grandchild, bit of a spoiled brat. I was kind <laughs> of um, very, I grew up in a very amazing, loving family. Right. I had a lot of extended family. My nanny lived near me, my mussies, my mummies, everyone lived near me. It right. was and an amazing childhood. And I think that it's given me a very strong sense of self-worth. Right. So I think when I meet people now, they're like, Mandy, where does that come from? And I yeah. think, you know, I was always allowed to be a free spirit. I was always allowed to kind of be fearless. And I think that, you know, that was the most amazing gift that I've been given by my family that actually stand up for what is right. And all these years later, I'm still here doing it. And I just yeah. think I'm so lucky. I have two brothers and I have a sister. They uh -huh. are amazing. Sadly, I lost my dad mm. um, just over 20 years ago and, um, you know, have an amazing mum. Mm. And, you know, she comes along with me sometimes to travel when I do talks and this. It's really exciting for her. But then again, Shushma, she does worry because actually yeah. I'm talking about issues yes. that a lot of people don't want to talk no, about. No, no. And, you know, because I've had fatwas, I've had threats all yes. the time. I'm not I'm, surprised. Yeah. And people don't know where I live because I have to do that because the, the nature of the work. Yes. Because actually, if you're talking about issues, 
that are sometimes people are holding on to so dear in their community and you're challenging that mm. people then kind of take it personal and it's mm. not about the religion so when I talk about Sharia courts or I talk about witchcraft or forced marriages it's nothing to do with Islam Sikhism or Hinduism it's the cultural side of it mm -hmm. and I'm very clear about that and I've been very lucky that I've been doing this for 27 years mm. and actually I've become very sought after I mean I've just flown back from Lithuania last week mm. and you know I've been very lucky in the fact that actually I lived in BC in the mm. 90s I, my family lived out here for a while but actually England is where my heart belonged and I ended up going, going back, back here yeah. yes so you talked about mum and dad letting you do what you wanted to do so yeah. they must have been very progressive thinking people they were I think they had their own values as well I mean you know I, my dad was quite strict in yes. certain areas of life you know I don't think you know I would um, were you, you know, allowed, we were allowed to date um, do you know what I ended up having an arranged marriage it wasn't a forced marriage I kind of came out of school and all my friends and cousins were having an arranged marriage I think if I would have found somebody the same religion and things I think they would have probably accepted it right but that wasn't a choice I ended up going through an arranged marriage not a forced marriage it didn't really work out mm. you know and it's really difficult I think um, you know it's uh, marriages and all relationships are give and take of course and sometimes um, you know things happen in our life that change the destiny in mm. our life I mean I was only married just over a year and ended up um, having major gynae surgery where I had a, a cancerous tumor on my ovary and I was mm. only 21 at the time so ended up having surgery lost 50% of my chances of ever having children mm. and you know that I think that was the beginning of the end of my marriage to be honest with you because you know it's really sad and this is comes back to being socially conditioned in our community that mm. women are defined by labels of being a mother a wife and children and I've totally turned that on its head because actually I'm a very successful um, activists around the world you know I'm financially stable and independent and right. I'm able to live my life my way right so I wasn't going to be defined by the negative level labels right. that people had expectations of me and I've have um, been campaigning for years I've talked about openly about not being able to have children mm. and you know I have an amazing nieces and nephews they're a part of my life and actually you know, I was saying to somebody recently, and like I met His Holiness Dalai Lama, I've, you know, I've met some amazing people in my mm. life. And they said, Mandy, you know what? You're going around the world, you're meeting young people, you're stopping harmful practices. If you had children, you probably wouldn't be flying around the world like you are. That's right. And you know, so sometimes, you know, like I said to you, destiny and life has a funny way of working out. And it's about having a positive mindset, For being sure. positive. And look at the, the glass as uh, half full. Yeah. instead of half empty oh yeah totally it must have been very difficult yeah. for you um at that time when you were going was. through you know so i guess sometimes all the negative things that happen in your life also give you a lot of strength it does and you know what i have a saying that what doesn't kill me makes me stronger mm. i don't look at the negatives i always just look at the positives mm. because actually in whatever situation there is something good mm -hmm. because actually being diagnosed with something so terminal in your 20s. Mm. I might not have been here today to tell the sale. Yes. So that is a blessing in its own. For sure. For and that's sure. how you have to look at life. Because actually you can sit here and cry over things that you have no control over. And, you know, I meet so many young people. I mentor so many young people now. And I just love it because actually, you know, that kind of instinct, that kind of maternal thing, you can take other people under your wing. You're right. And actually, because... You know, I'm going to eventually retire, you know, and somebody's got to do this. Take the work because yes. the work is never going to change. It's no. not going to end. So it's actually so important that if you have smashed a glass ceiling, that it becomes a floor for the next generation. Mm -hmm. I live my motto and my life by that because it is so important that women of color who have done well in their life, whether it's in business or finance or law or whatever it might be, that actually that we have a duty to empower and create opportunities for the next generation because that's what we have to do. I want to create um, a global change that I want to see in my lifetime. I want to see, I want to talk to you and, and see what different areas you've been able to impact yeah. and work within. But let's take a short break and come back to that. Thank you. Brilliant. Uh, Mandy is a woman in focus today. Don't go away. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Women in Focus. Mandy Sangera is a woman in focus today. Now, Mandy, we were talking about all sorts of um, atrocities yeah. that are being leveled upon women. Yeah in every culture. Yeah, exactly. I, and this is not just about the South Asian no. community, and I want to be very clear about yeah, that. Yeah, it isn't. It isn't yeah. just the South Asian community. When, when the US election was taking place the very first time when Barack Obama became the president, yeah. my sister and I were both talking about it, and I said, um, US would never have a woman president because yeah. majority of the people living in the United States, men, yeah. would not want a woman president. Yeah, and we're still tackling gender equality. And obviously, I work quite closely with the UN. Mm. And actually, one of the goals that I'm so passionate about is STG5, about mm. promoting gender equality. I want to see men become the ambassadors. So I'm very closely involved, and I'm actually um, a he for she ambassador for mm -hmm. Singapore and all of those, Malaysia, those countries, actually, mm -hmm. strange enough. I was out there last year. And what it is, um, I know that we look at the South Asian community because that's where I belong. Yeah. But however, you know, we look at Brit and look at Canada. We look at Britain. Women are still not being paid equal to men. No, and no, we are they're still not. No. Just recent story about Google not paying their yeah. female employees the same amount of money as yeah. they're paying their male employees yeah. doing the same job. Exactly. So this is a real thing. And there was a thing about there's women are paid twenty three percent less than men. Mm. I mean, that is like nearly a quarter. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is really shocking. And when I challenge some of these company executives, they'll say, oh, yeah, but the man's a breadwinner. And I thought, ain't women breadwinners? Yeah. You know, and it was, um, and he kind of didn't know how to answer me. Yes. But actually, you know, we are tackling so many issues. And I want to just talk about a couple of people that I have supported. Right. Um, Shushima, I have changed names because obviously of confidentiality yes, of and everything else. Um, so like today, I'm going to be talking about early child force marriages. And I did a girl summit with Malala and the prime minister, who is Prime Minister May and David Cameron mm. at the time. And we had lots of other global world leaders attend this event. And people are coming to me. Are these things really happening? Hmm. And do you know what? I picked up the news the other day, yesterday, picked up New York Times online, and they showed you just in Boston, which is not that far away. We're not talking southern states. We're talking, you mm -hmm. know, uh, you know. And an 11-year-old girl that's been raped is now being asked to marry the 20-year-old abuser. Oh, my God. That is happening on our doorstep. We're hmm. not talking India, Africa, or places where we think people are not educated. We hmm. are talking on our doorstep. We are talking North America. So, you know, this is why it was so important to talk about these issues. I got into this because I had a friend who had disability, um, Shushma, mm. and her mum and dad married her off. And I kept looking and I thought, hang on, do you know, she, she can't feed herself, she can't look after herself properly. Why is she getting married? Right. And at the time, it was more for immigration. Ah. And when I looked into it, um, after a few months, she had been beaten up, she'd been sexually abused, and she'd been like targeted so badly by this man. Mm. And he then was starting having affairs, he was like sleeping around with other women at the mm. time. And I went back and challenged my family, and this is when I was like 19, mm. <laughs> you know, I was still quite young and fresh faced then. Mm. And I had to challenge and say, what is going on? And people say, no, oh, yeah, Pajani here, she needs to get married. And I was like, hang on, this is not acceptable. Mm. And eventually that marriage ended. And I ended up campaigning a lot on disability because actually there were so many people that did not have a voice. Mm. Nobody was prepared to stand up for those people. I have supported young people who in Britain or in say even in Canada and other cases like that or even all around the world. Mm. Um, their families will say, look, we found you a young man. Mm. And there's nothing wrong with an arranged marriage, like we said earlier. Mm. It's when we meet somebody, Shushma, and you start saying, Mandy, no, actually, he's got a good job, he's got money, you're gonna have to marry him. And mm. I'm saying, no, actually, I don't no. want to because I've got a boyfriend. Mm. And, but you're saying, no, I'm gonna disown you, you're not having a big wedding, and you know we're gonna throw you out. So you put that person under so much duress, so much pressure. And the problem that we have right now in BC, we also have a lot of new communities mm -hmm. who are bringing their own different values. And these women do not speak English. No. So like, say, if they cook the refugees and migrants, and you know, they are very oppressed they don't have don't know where to go for help hmm. there's a lot of violence and also you know they have nagar so they have like three four wives at home you know and naturally we need to look at all these issues so this is a bit of a pandora's box that i have opened you know i'm working with the government here right now we want to set up and 
make forced marriages and harmful practices a criminal offence. We are saying that you are welcome to Canada, you're welcome to come to Britain. You know, this country is a land of opportunities, but we are not going to allow you to carry out harmful, abusive practices against young people. <clears throat> if people wanted more information yeah. about this, or wanted to get involved, yeah. or wanted to help, yeah, they can do. I mean, they can get in touch with Shakti Society. Mm -hmm. There's a lady called Kerry Gibson mm -hmm. who is actually coordinating this event today. Okay. But however, if people are worried and if there are young people listening today, mm. they can catch me on Twitter or find me through social media and ask for help and I can signpost them to the right services. Because the thing is, in Britain, one of the powerful things that I think that has been my longevity is mm -hmm. Shushma is going on to shows like this, mm -hmm. going into people's homes and talking about these issues that nobody wants to talk exactly. about. Exactly. Taboo issues. Yeah, they are taboo issues. And we don't want to talk about them. So they're out of sight, out of mind. Right. And we have to be very clear that there is nothing honorable about killing or abusing a person in the name of honor. Yeah. Because there is nothing honorable about abuse no. or killing a young person for living the life that they want to. So it's so important that we empower young people. And I think now to me, you know, this work, I feel really lucky to be one of the leading voices for doing this for 20 years. But actually, I want to take the next generation along with me. So mm. I do a lot of work globally. I have activists all around the world. I was at the United Nations last year speaking and earlier this year in March. And actually I met young people from like 80 odd countries who are passionate about this issue. They're saying, actually, Mandy, we want the tools, we want the equipment, we want to be able to challenge our parents. Right. We need to say to girls, you need an education. Because actually one of the things in India and in Pakistan is if we educate a girl, mm. she can work herself out of poverty. Mm -hmm. If we can create real jobs for these young women, mm -hmm. they become like breadwinners and then families are dependent on them, then they don't want to marry them. But it's when <laughs> people are in situations, right. poverty, desperation, will carry out harmful what, practices. What a weird world we live in. It's sad, isn't it, that it you is. and I are talking about this issue in the 21st century? There's a lot of work to be done, and, uh, and I uh, applaud the work that you're doing. Thank you. And thank you for coming to our studios and talking about this. Um, I wish you all the best and thank more you. power to you, Mandy. Thank you very much. No, it's been lovely to meet you too. Mandy Sangya has been our woman in focus today. Don't go away. We'll be right back.